participate in this specific trip. The buses tomorrow will depart uh, 8.30, not 8 a.m., okay? Thank you. And, and lunch. Oh, and the lunch is canceled because we didn't have um, a lot of people. Uh, the lunch is cancelled because uh, almost half of the registered people are coming and uh, almost all of them want, I mean the people are coming were the ones that don't want to stay. Only eight people want to stay and we cannot have two buses for these numbers. So we will have one bus, we will go in the morning and we will return as soon as we finish. And the lunch, I mean people will have lunch in Nicosia. The bus is going from where it's going from every day, Egypt Street. <laughs> At 8.30, Elina has sent emails. For the, it's for the Amathus trip, but also for the Thalassa trip, the departure is at 8.30, right? It's the same thing, the same place. So for the Thalassa Museum and for the Amathus trip, at 8.30, where you take the buses every morning, the same place, at Egypt Street, this is where you... Well, the Thalassa trip, uh, as long as you stick with the plan to go for lunch, um, I don't remember what was the estimate, 4.30? Yeah, so at 4.30 you will be, yes, you will be back to Nicosia at 4.30. Unless you decide not to do the lunch, but if you do that, you have to decide today because we have booked the restaurant. Okay? Okay. So, uh, and uh, before we leave here, we have to, uh, we're late. So, b because we have the reception and the dinner later, uh, we need to go a little fast. So depending on what time we finish, what we have to discuss, we will tell you where the buses are going to leave you and what the plan will be. We will improvise. Uh, with uh, Giulia Boetto and uh, Pierre Poveda, Pierre Poveda apologized, but uh, he's going to look at the uh, Kirin Yaship. Uh, we want to remember you, our next meeting, next year, the 15th ESBSA International Symposium on Boats and Ships Archaeology. And the symposium organized by the Centre Camille Julian will be held in Marseille with one day in the Musée d'Art Antique. Uh, we would like to invite you to see our website, uh, which is very simple, is wu, the three wu, <laughs> esbsa.org. So you will have all the information on it, uh, yes, I don't know, um, about uh, the conference uh, that will be held in Marseille. In the main location will be the Museum, uh, the big new museum in the uh, harbor. Um, and uh, one day we'll be in Hall, uh, where the uh, very famous uh, shipwreck Arlontois is uh, located. And we will have a, a lot of social events also accompanying our uh, conference. Uh, for example, uh, this trip in Hall, and also in the uh, if some navigation of on traditional boats in the Saturday in Marseille. And, uh, okay, so uh, you can see here uh, a, l a lot of different, we have a main, um, as a normal, a main topics for our, uh, c for the conference, but then other uh, specific um, teams that could fit uh, with different um, presentations. And of course, uh, a large uh, importance will be done to uh, poster sessions with a short presentation of, of each posters and uh, uh, film sessions, so also the film, if you, if you have film to show, uh, will be submitted to the steering committee and uh, will be presented in a particular space. And of course, uh, the navigation on the replica, as I told you, and of, uh, so I hope that uh, uh, to see you uh, numerous to these important events in Marseille, and so I tell you, 
see you next year in October 2018 from 22 to 27 of October. Thank you very much. Hello. Uh, probably a bit of a smaller event, but we wanted to uh, give a reminder from our presentation from the first day that we're holding um, a symposium for graduate students and early career researchers in Oxford um, in 2018 from February 3 to um, the 4th. Um, there's a Facebook page if you're interested. It's called MAGS 2018 for Maritime Archaeology Graduate Symposium. Um, it's also available on the uh, HFF website for more details, and you can probably find our website from, um, from there as well. Um, if you have any questions, you can talk to me, you can talk to Lisa or Crystal, somewhere in the, in the audience. Um, and what else? Yeah, we hope to see you there. So uh, Lisa is also going to have um, her laptop at the uh, reception and at the dinner. So if you want, if you have any specific questions or you want to give us your email for more details, um, feel free to contact her, and um, I think that's about it, yeah. So we hope to see you there. Thanks. <laughs> You're off my chairing list, David. You're off the list. It's, there's, no, there's no coming back now, I'm afraid. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Um, we, we've got a, a couple of other things that we want to talk about and obviously some more thank yous at the end um, but I just wanted to very briefly because we've, we have overrun of time um, to just talk a bit about um, what we're going to do next um, and I guess there are, there are two bits to that um, and I'm, I'm happy for feedback but only little snippets um, is we are very enthused to do this again, and I hope you agree that that would be a good idea. Um, thank you. Good. <laughs> um, I'm not saying Stella and I are going to do it again, of course, but, <laughs> but the principal, um, I know the trustees, who I don't even know if you are aware, they are all here, or have been, with one exception, Claude's now left, but which I'm absolutely delighted. So they've been absorbing all of this, and the feedback I've been getting is very positive. Thank you very much. And um, they are also very supportive of the idea of continuing what we would like to call um, a series and under the Mediterranean. We think this is a fitting title for a conference um, series going forward, and I, I hope I hope you're in agreement with that. Um, when, where, um, to be decided? I think uh, we will we will discuss this with the trustees. I think that obviously, if it's going to be supported in whatever fashion by by the foundation, it would be, and I think. I'm slightly biased, but um, personally, I think it would be good if we continued the principle of this in the Mediterranean, but specifically within the regions that, um, the, tr that the foundation is supporting. So that's the eastern Mediterranean, Syria, Lebanon, Cyprus, but also let's not forget Malta and Sicily. And so, there, so there are options, but we can, dis we can think about that. I mean, the usual time lapse is three, four years. Um, so that's, that would probably be what along the lines of what we're thinking. And as you know, we have identified in advance, and they've been amazing. Um, the session chairs have just been great. Thank you all very much indeed. But they weren't just session chairs. They didn't realize that, of course, when they signed up. Um, they're now also very great, kindly agreed to help with some of the editing, and I'll get on to the publication in a minute, but also perhaps form the core, uh, I mean, with some exceptions. There's no, like, I'm not cracking my whip or blowing my kazoo on this one, but, um, but basically forming the core of a steering committee as well, so that at least we've got dialogue going forward, and it's not just Stella and, on Stella and I's shoulders, and it's not just our vision, because I think it's important that we have, uh, I know, this amazing group of academics that we've brought together and, and, and utilize them, basically. So hopefully that's, um, uh, everybody's happy about that. Um, so the, the actual publication for this conference 
Um, I know that when we first advertised this, we've mentioned frequently the concept of tropis, which is very much at the core and the inspiration of this conference. Obviously, we've made it much broader in its scope. We've introduced many different sort of themes of research. Um, and I think that both Stella, well, I know Stella and I are in agreement on this. We, we recognize that you know, things have moved on since Tropis. We're living in a very different world. Look at the people in the audience. They represent a whole different range of, um, of research interests and, and specialities. And also, we're living in a world, I don't know how it translates through to the rest of Europe, but in the UK, it's called REF. And that means that in terms of publishing, publishing a conference proceedings verbatim is not necessarily a good ref returnable publication. Is it not, Simon, who's head of research for the for, <laughs> for humanities at Southampton? So I hope I've said the right thing. Um, so what we would like to do is obviously publish, um, but we were thinking around um, focusing papers through submission uh, that would be peer-reviewed, so this would be a more rigorous process of selection um, that would probably m predominantly focus around the themes that are, are akin to the maritime archaeology of the Mediterranean. So that means largely the sessions which have been, A, the bigger ones, but also harbors and ports, ships, wrecks and ship construction, maritime cultural landscapes, connectivity, etc. In probably... Uh, as opposed to the, those more broad-reaching um, sessions that we've had on sort of archaeological science and management and technology. This isn't to say that if you submitted a paper in one of those sessions, you're not eligible to submit your paper for publication, but we're asking that you fit it more into this more focused theme around the archaeology of the region. And again, I'm sure all of this will be thoroughly decided once we've discussed it with the trustees at the next meeting. I've already, we are already in the process of talking to publishers and you will be given lots of warning, so basically at least six, probably not too many more months, but in order to prepare your papers for submission, but they will be taken on board by our editorial team, whoever that exactly constitutes, and they will be peer reviewed. So it's not a you will absolutely be published as a result of turning up, I'm afraid. Um, and I think, I hope you agree that's a fair way because I know we're all up against it now. And you know, time spent with the, with the writing, the publishing, the editing needs to be well invested, I think that's. And also, as a foundation, we want to produce a high quality product. And I think that's, you know, there, if I get my way, I'd like, <laughs> no, I mean, it would be nice to think that this is a publication that the foundation supports going forward, and it would be nice to reflect that as a good quality publication so that we can all be proud of the work that we're doing as our research within the region and some of which are pub uh, supported by the, by the Honor Frost Foundation. Um, so I think that obviously would be called this would be under the Mediterranean one, and we'd like to dedicate volume one, which may be more than one volume, I hasten to add, but we'll see on the submission of the papers. But we'd like to dedicate to the, those studies in the memory of Honor Frost, unsurprisingly. Um, but going forward, the series would be called Under the Mediterranean, um, etc. So um, let me just, I think I've said everything about that. Does anybody, is there any dissenting voices? Any ideas? Not too many, because there's not a lot of time to discuss. But if you have ideas, please do email us, and then we can, oh, talk about them in reception. Oh, that's a good idea, just so I can, <laughs> I can make sure I don't yeah, move from the spot for more than. Um, OK, the next, the next thing we would like to announce is, and this was the trustee's idea, um, they would like to announce that there was going to be a competition for the best poster presentation. Um, I'm, oh, and one thing I did for, forget to uh, uh, say, for the, for the publication, we are not excluding posters, I mean, i.e. the themes behind the posters. Obviously, we don't want to publish a poster as an academic um, article, but if you feel that the, the material in your in your poster is of good enough quality to meet that rigorous peer review process, then you are also you know feel free to submit an article for publication. But in the meantime, I would like to think we we would like to think if if the trustees are in approval of this that all the abstracts which were 
um, which were also reviewed and edited, so they are of a nice high quality, I hope, but we should put them on, on the website of the foundation so it demonstrates the breadth and depth uh, of the papers that have been presented here, so you will have a, an outward-facing um, you know, view of, 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 your, of your hard work. And then, in addition, there will be this poster, um, poster prize uh, that will be a, um, a, well, be a, a cash prize, I guess. I think we agreed. Um, and it will be um, vetted by the trustees. So um, I think that's a really nice uh, additional touch because it's, uh, it's the trustees really getting involved, which um, that's great. Um, and we've decided on a deadline for that. Oh, you'd have to submit a PDF of your poster so that we can actually have something, you know, material to look at by November the 15th. Um, it will obviously have to then be reviewed. So you probably won't, we won't have the results, I would imagine, until the end of the year, beginning of next year. But if we could submit them by November the 15th, again, we'll put all this information out through the Under the Mediterranean uh, <coughs> Gmail address. So everything is um, reiterated that I'm saying now verbally uh, through the email process. Um, I think that's all I had to say in terms of what next. Unless anybody thinks I've really forgotten something, Miranda does. Oh, the Carinia replica when they leave. I think that's. I think there've been numerous emails. 8:30 as well. Everybody's leaving at 8:30. But the first one, obviously, because the Carinia one is. Eight thirty. Yes, is it, just before we move on or back to uh, the trips. Is there anybody wants to say anything around? I know also that the editors or some of the editors and the editor of IJNA and JMA and in fact John Henderson, if he's still here, I think he's gone actually, um, are in the process of. I mean, obviously the journals are publishing all the time and they've been interested in a number of papers. So if you feel that your work isn't being represented, represented necessarily through the publication ideas that I've just mapped out, um, you may find a, a good home for your publication in one of the two journals. And also John Henderson is working on a publication around sort of digital humanities. So there could be some avenues for publication through the, the technology session. So, um, if you want more information on that, either contact him directly or come through us. So, everybody's happy with that? Ah, great. Fantastic. I'm so happy myself. <laughs> so, um, for the Kyrenia sailing trip, all buses leave from Egypt Street, okay? First group, 7.30 a.m. 7.30. The second one... 9.30, and the third one, 12, okay? For the other two trips, Amathus and Ayanapa, 8.30. Both of them from Egypt Street. Thank you. Hello, so for any of you who I haven't spoken to over the last few days, I'm Miranda Richardson. I'm the editor of the International Journal of Nautical Archaeology. So firstly, I'd like to join the many voices in thanking Dr. Stella Domestica and Dr. Lucy Blue and the University of Cyprus for bringing us all here. I'd like to thank the Honor Frost Foundation for supporting the conference and for supporting the International Journal of Nautical Archaeology through a grant made to the Nautical Archaeology Society. In awarding the grant, the trustees recognised Donna Frost's commitment to publication, seen in her work as one of the journal's founders, and you can watch the develop or trace the development of the journal through her notes and articles um, published within it. I don't know if any of you saw the NAS display we had out over the last couple of days. The IJNA is now a hybrid journal. It's hard copy and online. And we have the IJNA Honor Frost Foundation Prize, which seeks to promote open access publication. This allows the greatest numbers to read articles freely. Of course, this allows those outside the academic community to access recent research and perhaps 
to be encouraged to participate in it. So open access fees are generously donated for one article selected from a short list defined by d download and citation data. And now I'm very happy to announce and ask the winner of the IJNA Honor Frost Foundation Prize for an article published in 2016 to come up, and that is Dr. Deborah Spiegel from the Recognati Institute at Haifa University, and it's for the 19th century Akko Tower Wreck, a summary of the first two excavation seasons, and we heard Debbie talk about it the other day. And, and I'd like to ask Alison Cathy to come up to congratulate her also. I don't actually have anything to give, Debbie, because it's a transfer of... <laughs> Of love and thanks. <laughs> and congratulations. Yes. This is a fantastic thing and well done. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. <laughs> uh, okay. Just to say a big thank you to the Honor Frost Foundation to the IJNA and also to the Israel Science Foundation, all of them, um, the Honor Frost Foundation and the Israel Science Foundation who uh, sponsored the project of uh, the Akotao Rec uh, underwater excavation. It's really an honor to win this prize, but it also was sort of a closure because the people who discovered the shipwreck, uh, Elisha, Elisha Linder and Avner Raban, were my teachers and now it's like, some sort of a nice closure because I we continued their research, we answered the questions that they left behind, and it's like a very nice closure. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay, 102 papers and 56 posters. I thought, I think you're not expecting us to summarize what is, <laughs> what is presented because it's impossible. So um, I would like to thank once more the Honor Frost Foundation and of course thank you all for being here. I'm sure that Honor Frost would have enjoyed this birthday party very much. Um, before we go on with uh, our social events today, um, I would like to present you and then thank uh, all the people that have helped this conference to happen. And uh, I will not, I don't want just to present their names because they are students and they are young researchers. So I want to, well, I want to present them properly to you if you allow me. So first, our conference secretary is a rising star in Amphora studies, and she has been working with the Polish team at Kato Paphos, uh, and has recently, in 2015, dived into our world. Please, Agata. Also, another very active assistant during these four days, a valuable one, Dr. Massimiliano Sessi. Please, Massi. <laughs> Still with his camera on, Massi uh, is, has done his PhD in the University of Sassari. Yes, and uh, on, on management of cultural heritage management, and now he's working here with us for some months in the European project Aymara Culture. Uh, the person that is responsible for our catering, I mean, the first day, the Thursday reception, she actually cooked and prepared the reception for um, the few people that, 70 people that were there. But since then, she was the one that made sure that everything went well with our food. And uh, uh, apart from that, uh, she is a PhD candidate in our university. She's doing Byzantine archaeology. So a big thank you to Cristala Lois. <laughs> And 
and um, my dear PhD student, an HFF scholarship recipient who is working on cultural heritage management as well with a focus on shipwreck sites, as you know, those that have heard her paper. Anna Dimitriou, please. <laughs> On our first birthday was, uh, is in October, which is the middle of our term here. So we need to uh, thank in absentia the students that had classes to attend. So they, they were here all the time and they have helped very much, uh, but uh, they could not be here now with us today. So it's Ageliki Halkia, Marina Papadimitriou, Yorgos Filippou, and Varvara Stivaru. Thank you very much. Uh, Dimitra Perisiu, please come. Dimitra is also is, uh, has an MA, uh, not with us. Uh, her MA was with the University of Southern Denmark and is now here with us working uh, also in the European project Aymara Culture. Thank you very much, Dimitra. <laughs> and uh, now, uh, MA uh, students, MA students who are conducting their thesis already. Uh, Zinona Socratus is working on the Kurion Harbor. <laughs> the person that organized the trips that we're going tomorrow and has assisted so much, so effectively with the rest of the organizing aspects. Uh, is uh, working or is going to work uh, on Bronze Age shipsheds on Crete. This is Lina Bitsakaki. <laughs> Lina is also an HFF scholarship recipient for this year, 2017. And uh, the person that took over recently on the three weeks ago fully the organizing, the organization, the, all the logistics of the, the conference. And uh, she was the heart of the front desk and she excelled on every level, is going to, is working on ships repairs and shipwright tools. And this is Andrea Vripidu, a very, very big thank you. And last but very far from least, <laughs> uh, an MA student that uh, didn't have to attend classes, uh, who has worked with us at Mazotos and Ischia projects, and has won a very special place in the Marlab team and my heart, Christiana Christodoulou. <laughs> So I guess we can be, if we leave here, we can be by six o'clock at the center of Nicosia, <coughs> which means that you will have time just to go to your hotels, change, refresh, and walk to our venue, the, the reception venue at seven o'clock. You have to be there at seven o'clock. You will find direction. It's in, in the old um, center, city of Nicosia. So the, the venue is the house of, the, of Hadzigorgakis Cornesius. You will see how it's written properly in your booklets. Uh, so you can Google it and find it. It's offered by the Department of Antiquities. And the reception there is uh, offered, the drinks are offered by Willy Publication, Publishers. That's Wiley. Wiley, sorry, sorry, Wiley Publishers. Uh, the publishers of the IJNA. Um, so we're going to be there for an hour, and then we need to leave that venue, walk for 10 minutes, and uh, those of you that are joining us for the conference dinner, we're going to walk at the restaurant and where they expect us at 8.30. Okay. Hang on, 
yes. Okay, there's one person that's been forgotten in all of this, the person who's put, I would say, absolutely 120% worth of her time into organizing this conference, not just in terms of the hundreds of emails and the numerous Skype conversations that she mentioned at the beginning of the conference, but also in terms of organizing this amazing team and just being on top of everything. Everybody here is volunteering pretty much, um, or, or working in their spare time whilst also running classes, going to European meetings, etc., etc. I have the privilege of just my day job. <laughs> but um, I think that this person needs to be really given a big, big thank you, and that's my colleague and my very good friend, <laughs> Stella Domestica. And, and I think yeah. the, and the final thanks is also to all of you, all of you for making the effort, for coming here, to presenting fantastic papers, for helping, for being patient, putting up with my kazooing, and, and obviously, ultimately, to the trustees of the foundation and to honour. Thank you very much. Πάνω. Ενάμε στην ΕΜΑ, αλλά περίμενε.